Uh, mine is the travel log, a uh, slight twist. So in 2007, my wife and I uh, took a four month, 14 country trip around the world, my wife Molly. I took two inexpensive guitars, my wife took one inexpensive camera, and this is documentation of what we did and how you can do it yourself for less than $40 a day. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself a one-way ticket to Istanbul, Turkey, or the destination of your choice. It has to be one way because then you're stuck. From there, you just go piecemeal. And it was surprisingly difficult to get to Egypt from Turkey, expensive, so we had to take hydrofoil to Cyprus and then fly to Egypt. I have a great, funny, long story about men throwing up on a boat for two hours. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell it here. But it was worth the uh, throwing up to get to Egypt for that photo because people always ask if it's real. This is Rishikesh, India, where the Beatles wrote most of the songs on the White Album, so I've grown sideburns uh, to to that. I highly recommend the sideburns if you're in India. So from there, of course, we go to the Taj Mahal. A travel tip about saving money in India is if you've been to the Taj Mahal once, don't go again because it's quite expensive, and you can just go around to the back, and it's free there. Uh, this, this picture was, uh, is one of my favorite photos. This was printed in Guitar Player Magazine, and unfortunately, they call these young men uh, panhandlers, which they are not. They were entre entrepreneurs. They are businessmen. They charge us $5 to take a picture with that camel. <laughs> From India, we go to Nepal. There's nothing to say about this photo except that I like the bird flying off. Uh, but we did go to the monkey temple, which is going to come up next. Now, the monkey temple, if you don't know, in Nepal, there's thousands and thousands of monkeys running around all the time, except the day that we were there. It was very hot, and they were sleeping in the forest. Luckily, we found a local woman who knew how to call the monkeys to uh, be in our photos. So this picture was taken just minutes before a giant monkey has jumped on my head and grabbed something out of my hand, and I'm freaking out, thinking, I'm going to get some disease and die from a monkey, and it's the fall. Uh, and the woman said, oh, yes, the monkeys are not impatient for the photos. So just a tip that they are even. Uh, this is Bangkok. Not much to say. It's a good place for travelers to go because everything is cheap, and you can get cheap flights to everywhere else in Southeast Asia. So coming up next is this going to be three photos of Laos. Now, or Laos as some people call it. Well, there's three of them because in particular, this photo as it comes up, well, as you can see, I'm unable yeah. to lift up my back leg in this picture, or I'm not lifting up my back leg because 45 minutes prior to this picture being taken, we were in a serious motorbike accident, which I just found out last year, four years later, left me with a broken collarbone. Now, it was not the Lao hospital staff's fault that I was undiagnosed, uh, because in the States, it took an MRI to be able to see this break. So this is me in Lao with a broken collarbone, pretending to not be in immense pain. This is a wonderful place in Bien Chen, outside of Bien Chen, called the Buddha Garden, which is a, uh, a garden that was designed by an untrained artist, and he just drew a bunch of pictures and then gave them to sculptors to make these crazy statues. So that's me inside of that. Up next, we're going to have Angkor Wat. Now, Angkor Wat is this great, amazing, mysterious city in northern Cambodia. and. Uh, I was not able to enjoy it quite as much as I wanted to, or maybe I enjoyed it more than I wanted to, because I was full of over-the-counter Percocets uh, due to the injury a couple days before. I was so out of it that I asked a gentleman, while we were in Cambodia, he was wearing a shirt emblazoned with the word Cambodia on it, and I said, oh, Cambodia, that, I hear that's really great, how was it? <laughs> From Cambodia, we head to Vietnam. This is Hao Long Bay. This is me playing for some tourists, some other travelers on the boat. This is sort of a princess cruise line of the third world, as it were. Uh, this is something I ended up doing a lot of. A lot of my gigs were playing for other travelers and tourists as we uh, did our touristy things, like the boat on the trip and uh, the trip on the boat. And uh, it's a good way to get gigs and new fans. This is Hong Kong. Number one travel tip in Hong Kong is the HI Hostelling International, which I highly respect and recommend. The HI Hostelling International is $8 a night for basically this view, as opposed to $800 a night, which is what most of these hotels would cost you. This is the point overlooking all of Hong Kong Bay. All right, this is an important tip if you ever go to Tibet, is make sure that you read the label warnings on any over-the-counter drugs. We went to go buy some uh, uh, high-altitude sickness medicine. We did not buy it because it was a little expensive. But later, when we checked it online, it had been banned in most countries for five years for a disease that makes your skin fall off. <laughs> Mount Everest, okay. 
everyone should go. Uh, we took hundreds of photos here, and someone finally said, come on, we're going to have plenty of time to take other photos. I said, no, take more photos, please, because 20 minutes later, the mountain was gone, covered by a shroud of clouds. Uh, it did come back, but I've heard tell people being there for days and never seeing Mount Everest. So if you're ever there, take a lot of photos. Uh, this is in Mount Everest Base Camp, playing with one of the locals. It took about two minutes for basically all of base camp to come into the to the tent here to hear that there was a concert going on. A lot of requests for the gambler on this trip. Like, can you rock with it? Or not? Uh, the Great Wall of China. So it's about 120 degrees, 80 percent humidity. You can see that is 100 percent smog. And the uh, the touts that day were insistent, insistent that I play a song. So I played the Spinal Tap tune, give me some money, and the irony was not lost. <laughs> From China, we took the Trans-Siberian Railroad across from Beijing to Moscow. This is the only proof that I have that I was ever in Mongolia, is this sign that says, Welcome to Mongolia. We were there for about all of ten minutes. Uh, it is not photoshopped. From Mongolia, we end up in Moscow. The other big shout out I have to give, uh, HI Hostling and also Couchsurfing. Are there any couch surfers in the room? Yes, couchsurfing.org. I highly recommend it. It saved us hundreds and hundreds of dollars on our trip and made a lot of great new friends, um, including the number two gentleman at the Filipino Embassy in Moscow, is who we stayed with, along with uh, eight other travelers in his two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> and finally, this is Prague, the Charles Bridge. I got to live in Prague for a few months in 1999, so it was a bit of a homecoming for me. It was also the last spot on our trip before we actually came home. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say the two things you need to do if you ever plan a trip around the world are, one, buy ticket somewhere and two don't plan anything else